Hey guys, Emily here. I am here today with a video for our new intervention teachers that are working at the middle school level. Now, I have a number of people that have reached out and asked about specific information or insight related to working with struggling readers at that upper elementary or middle school area. And I wanna remind you, I spent 10 years of my career in middle school intervention and English, kind of a hybrid type of a program that I'll share with you today. But before we get started, I want to remind you to first make sure you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Feel free to share with anybody who may benefit and click the little bell below so that you receive notifications when I upload. All of those things help YouTube know that what I have is valuable to people and it helps others find me. So if we could do that, that would be great. Now, jumping into our middle school intervention area, this is a unique type of situation working with middle school students for a number of reasons. First is, is it too late? Is it too late when we see middle schoolers that are struggling with reading? Can we really make any changes and gains? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can. So if you are a special ed teacher, intervention teacher, any middle school teacher, and you're worried about your middle schoolers, there's still hope. Now, you know, in education, we hear all of the time, we need our students reading proficiently by the end of third grade to put them on a trajectory of success. And there's a lot of truth to that in the fact that we can make gains earlier or we can make gains quicker the earlier it is. And so third grade is, is that point where students have are moving from the learning to read to reading to learn and how they do in third grade is really going to determine um, so much of their success later on. However, we can still get students in middle school that are struggling. Either they've missed intervention, they didn't get um, proper, properly matched instruction and curricula related to their actual need. Um, they might, you might have students on IEPs or 504s or kids that are struggling for a variety of reasons. And it's not too late. Okay, so hold on to that. It's easier when they're younger, but it's not too late. Some of the challenges with working in middle school in intervention, the number one challenge in my experience is working within a master schedule. We have kids that have schedules and we're now talking about earning credits by completing their um, core classes so that they are meeting those requirements for middle school and even early high school. And so a master schedule can be kind of restricting when it comes to intervention. Elementary school, we can create kind of a platooning program where kids are either walking to intervention or in some cases they're being pulled out for intervention. It doesn't work that well in the middle school because they have to continue to maintain their progress in their core classes. Super important. So how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of things that we did in my experience, and I'll share with you kind of a generic way and look that what our program did. This was in, I'm going to say around the 2010 mark, 2009, we kind of worked this program for about five years or so. Um, and we worked within a master schedule and we did that by creating a class we called it reading strategies at the time. I would definitely rename it at this phase, but it was a blocked class. So I was the teacher of record. I was also the English teacher and I was the reading specialist and interventionist. So students that qualified for intervention at the middle school actually had me for two periods. It did eat up one of their electives. We had six periods in a day. Um, and so it, it took away an elective, which can be a challenge, but I can tell you how to kind of work around that as well. So students are scheduled with me for two 
50 minute periods and they received their English credit for seventh and eighth grade because I had two intervention classes uh, at the same time different time, but on the master schedule. And what I was able to do is deliver their English content, their core content, in addition to supplementing their needs in the area of reading skills. And so I was given more time to attack the core and time to fill gaps. So it was wonderful. It was a great program. Um, it was actually one of our highlighted programs that qualified our middle school for a distinguished school award at that time. It was just a great, a great situation. I can share more if you want to know more about this. You can drop questions or comments um, in the chat below or email me readingdiva06 at gmail.com. So this is how we worked around the master schedule. Now, how do you work around the situation where, okay, you're taking kids out of an elective, aren't they going to be a little bit ticked? <laughs> and the answer is, yeah, <laughs> they kind of are. Um, and it's really important that when you are finding the right person for this class, because they have to, in this case, they had to have their English um, content delivered as well. But you need to make sure that the person is understanding of what these kids have been through. We're looking at middle school students. So let's say seventh grade. That means that they have had years of frustration and reading failure that they are carrying with them as baggage into middle school. This just exasperates kind of that little chip on the middle school shoulder anyway. You've got kids, they're frustrated. They are defeated. They don't think anyone can help them. And, you know, no wonder they have a little bit of attitude and you mix all of that in with biology and it's kind of this perfect storm. So the good news is though, they still want the help. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to be successful. And so when you can show your kids that you can help them do that, that is how we can Make sure they understand that the value that they're getting by being there is worth that elective space. So that is one thing. Now, another challenge at the middle school area is, is in the area of assessment and curricula. So let's talk about assessment first. Typically, kids that qualify for middle school intervention are no longer receiving part of a universal screener like a cadence, for example. And so we're using end of the year summative assessments. In California, it's the CASP. Um, and so it might be the MAP for you. There's a number of different ones depending on your state. And that is kind of where we started to pull our kids. So we were looking for kids that were below proficiency on that end of the year state test. In addition to grades, we are also tracking grades and any teacher recommendation. Now in my district, we had a really strong working relationship with our elementary um, intervention programs. And so they would share with us those kids that were coming up that may have uh, continued needs in reading intervention. Another group is that you might be receiving students quite a bit that are already on IEPs. And so you might be getting information from your RSP teachers and that sort of thing. Um, so you're going to have to do some additional assessment to make sure that you're actually getting kids that truly have a need. And so what I did is I created a protocol that involved an oral reading fluency with a one minute read, uh, I'm sorry, a one minute retell, a writing sample, a, a spelling sample, so that I could look at some additional pieces and determine if that student was going to be best served with me for two periods, focusing in on some of those missed gaps, or if they would be better served staying in their core classes. And so there's lots of decisions that have to be made that way. Another thing that I had to do was find a balance between their core content, tier one English curriculum, 
and supplemental programs that would help me to fill gaps. Now, what you'll find at the middle school is that a great deal of the areas of need are going to be comprehension. This is what everybody will, will notice. But the big question is, why is comprehension a problem? We know from the simple view of reading that there are so many other sub skills or substrands of reading that can go in and affect a student's comprehension that you have to be able to figure out, is it just comprehension for comprehension's sake? Or is it a lack of decoding? Is it a lack of fluency? Is it a lack of vocabulary knowledge? Because so many of those things they're going to affect the comprehension. And so that's why you're going to need to do some additional digging and assessment to make sure that you are actually serving the kids that need services. But then what do you put them in? And curricula in middle school, at least while I was there, was limited. There's a great deal more available now, but I worry and I want to caution you about putting your middle school kids just strictly in a computer-based program. Now, there are some out there that now incorporate some direct instruction with the teacher as well, and those might be options for you. Um, we didn't have that available for me at the time. But we don't want to just put our kids in front of computers hoping that that's going to fix them because it's not. We need to have that personal relationship and that personal experience with those kids. So looking for curriculum that is going to help with fluency, vocabulary development, um, supporting comprehension. And yes, you might need to go back and do some phonics instruction or at least some multisyllabic word instruction. Now at that time, and remember, I know that there are other things out there available, but what I used, some of the things that were really um, a great part of my program, six minute solution for fluency. I still like it. Um, I've had, there's another video if you haven't seen it about what curriculum I have used, that is mentioned in there. Um, I really liked also rewards by Anita Archer, which is a multisyllabic word decoding. I wanted to try to expedite my students' decoding of polysyllabic words as quickly as I could, and Rewards was a really great tool that we incorporated into this program. Another one is vocabulary development, um, and there's a link, and I'll put all these links below for you, but there is a website. Uh, the organization is called SERP. S-E-R-P, and they have a great free, I know, right, free vocabulary development um, curriculum supplemental that is called Word Generation, and this is a really impressive free tool, quite honestly, and that was something else that I utilized in my program to develop um, vocabulary. Now, I also did progress monitoring uh, about once a month with these kids, and we used an oral reading fluency to track those. We know that fluency is strongly correlated to gains in comprehension, and so that was justified with that. So keep in mind that middle school students can still have significant gains. I'm so proud of so many of my former students who are now going on to be teachers, they're professionals, they're in universities, they're, uh, you know, they're all over the place or they're working really hard raising families because it's been a long time with them and I still keep in touch with, with a, a handful of them. It's, it's delightful. Um, so please don't think that it's too late. And if you are a middle school teacher or a middle school interventionist in particular, you've got your work cut out for you. It takes a lot of creative thinking about how you are going to provide support for these kids and not hold them back from what they need to do with the rest of their peers and in their core content. So I hope that gave you some food for thought. Um, feel free again to drop any questions, comments. I would love to hear what you're doing in your own programs, what is working uh, for those particular kids. And I have a little surprise for you. I've been working on a another free resource for you. 
that is a planner. So it is, I'm going to put the finishing touches on that and it will be linked down below, but it is a free intervention planner that is a template that you can download and uh, manipulate, revise it, edit it, print it off of Canva. If you don't have a Canva account, you need to get one. It's a free account and this will go through Canva. I will also put that link below and I hope that you get some benefit from it. Let me know what you think because I'm working on putting a few little workshops together for you and so I'm trying to gather your names and information if you are interested in learning with me starting in 2023. All right. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for viewing today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for what you do. Bye for now.